Welcome to the SAP HANA Academy. My name's Bob, and in this series of videos, we'll be looking at some of the new features in SAP HANA SBS 11. And in this series of videos, we'll be looking at smart data integration. In this video, we're going to look at the new just-in-time data preview feature. So this is a feature where after you've enabled it, you can execute a flow graph, but you can look at certain transforms or look at the data within certain transforms within that flow graph. You can preview the results without running the entire flow graph. This feature can then be used to debug and test any of your flow graphs by previewing how the data is transformed after each node. Now the key thing here is that the preview data is temporary and isn't written to any downstream output targets. So to use the feature, what we need to do is we need to enable some rights. Um, so what I'll do is I'll just cover enabling those rights before we use the feature. So you do this as the user you want to enable the rights for. So you don't need to log in as the system user. I've logged in here as a user called SHA. And we essentially need to give rights to the sys repo user. Now, you might have already given these rights, but you need to make sure this is enabled. Otherwise, the feature is not going to work. So if I go to my catalog and launch a SQL console, all I need to do is execute the following syntax. So the syntax looks like this. So I'm going to run a select and an execute on the schema SHA, which is this user's schema, to the sysrepo user with grant option. That's the only thing that you need to do. So how does the feature work? Well, let me give you some background about how we're going to test it. So I've got a package, and within that package, I've got a flow graph called GIT Data Preview. Now, as a developer, if you've ever developed an ETL before, what you'll tend to do is you won't just have one extract, one transform, and one load. What you'll realistically have is at least one extract. You'll have multiple transforms, and you might have multiple loads. That's the reality of when you build these ETL jobs. Here's a simple example where I've got two inputs. We've got a series of transforms where we perform a union, perform a match, we then filter, we perform an aggregation, and we rename a column. And in my simple example, we're outputting to a singular template table. Now, how does the feature work? Well, in SPS 11, what you can do now without turning on just-in-time data preview is if I go to any source table or any target table, what you'll see now is you have this little icon here, which gives you a data preview. So if you select it, it will run essentially a select statement on that table on the right hand side in a new tab. So this by default works for sources and works for target tables. So what you might want to do is, is look at the data within each transform. So you might not want to obviously look at the final result because it's somewhere down the line. You, for example, you might be getting zero rows in your target table and you don't understand why maybe a filter is doing too much restriction or maybe a match is being overly aggressive. An aggregation, you're aggregating the wrong column. All of these might impact the data that you get in your target. So to use the feature is very straightforward. All you need to do is if I select an um, a object and if I drill into that object, what you'll see is we've got this option, which is JIT data preview. So if I select that object and go back now at the moment, nothing will have happened. But what essentially will happen is once I save and activate a calculation view will be created, which will only filter on this part of the transform. So essentially, I've not executed the, um, the task, but now because a calculation view has been based on this part of the transform, so obviously all the way up to here, what I'm able to do now if I select this object is that I'll have this option, which is that just-in-time data preview. So in this example, I've got two data sources, the columns are exactly the same, and I'm performing a union. So again, if I now select, just like before, what it's going to do is it's going to run a temporary calculation view, um, as you can see here by the notation. And what will be outputted will be all the data up to that point. So there we go. So we can see that data, all the data up to that point. But again, you'll notice that we didn't need to execute the task. So again, if I close that window, and if I click, you'll see the icon here. Of course, you see it for the source. But if I go to my match transform, you can see we don't have the icon selected. Again, 
Why? Because I need to go into the transform that I want to apply this to, switch on just-in-time data preview, go back. We don't need to execute the job. If I click back here, we see it here. If I execute it now, it doesn't work because what you actually need to do is save and activate the table. That's all you need to do. So if I go back and just do a save and activate, we can see that the, um, the flow graph has been saved and activated successfully. But what should happen now is if I do a just-in-time data preview, we can see the results. So here you can see in my match, we've got our typical match columns. We've got four rows. But if I go to my next object and I perform, obviously here I've put a filter because I've actually specified on the transform what I've done. But this, the name that you've called your transforms might not be indicative of what you've done. It's actually a good, very good practice to name what your transforms are doing. But let's see what this filter is doing. Of course, if I drill in and go to my filter node, we can see it's performing a filter there. But just to apply the just-in-time data preview, if I go back, save and activate, and then go to that object, you can see the results. So here I simply filtered and I outputted the company name only and I filtered where these were master records. So a very simple feature which is actually really, really useful when you're doing um, development within SDI in SAP HANA SPS 11.